my name is Christy. Welcome back to my channel. kept walking around so I figured if he's up here with me he doesn't tap dance on the floor. Today's video I am making a milkmaid inspired top. I've been seeing this all over the internet it is really cute and I'm so glad it's coming back into style and I'm also using scrap fabric. It is fabric left over from an apron that I made for my really cute mom. Check out the description box below for that video. It was the perfect fabric for this style of top. It was floral and a polka dot paired together. It's really cute. And ladies, if you are not blessed up here, this is the perfect style of top for you because it automatically doubles your size. So bonus. I hope you enjoy this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Hit that bell for notifications. And if you're ready, I'm ready. I'm so excited. Thanks so much for being here. Okay, here we go. Here's the fabric. It is a green and white polka dotted scrap measuring 27 and a half inches by 21 inches at its longest points, left over from an apron that I made for my mom's birthday, and then another random rectangle scrap, and also a green and white daisy print of the same measurements, and another rectangle scrap. The rectangle scraps are, well, to be honest, I didn't even measure, since I wasn't sure if I'd be able to use them. I am trying something new and taking measurements rather than patterning from existing clothes. So the first measurement I am taking is just under the bust line. Be sure to write these down since yours will be a little bit different from mine, but whatever your number is, go ahead and round up a half an inch. Next measurement is just under the bust line to however long you would like the top to be. I want the gathered part of the top to start about four inches in from the side seam. Next, I'm taking the measurements of the fullest part of my bust, then subtracting four inches from either side, so just minus eight inches. I've cut out all of the pattern pieces, two of the side pieces, which ended up being four inches at the bottom, tapering up to five inches at the armhole, and then with a gentle slope to the top, and the full piece measured 21 inches in length. The shoulder seam is three inches wide. I cut a lining piece that measures nine inches by 12 inches along the top and 10 and a half inches on the bottom. The lower piece was also 10 and a half inches on top and nine inches along the side. And I cut two of these since the daisy print is a lighter weight cotton. For the gathered ruffle, I cut a piece nine inches tall by the full length I could get from my scrap fabric, which ended up being about 26 and a half inches wide. And I ended up being able to use the scrap rectangle fabric piece by cutting it to three inches wide and then in half to extend the strap pieces on the back. One last piece is the back piece, which measured 21 inches by 13 and a half inches for me. Obviously your numbers will probably be different according to your measurements and not mine. Since this is a non-stretchy cotton fabric, I will be shirring the back with elastic to make sure I can actually wear this top. Now that all the pieces are cut out, we could start sewing it together. With right sides together, line up the top lining piece with the bottom lining piece, pin together, and then sew with a half an inch seam allowance on your sewing machine. Be sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end. Next, sew two rows of basting stitches along the long sides of the ruffle piece. A basting stitch just is usually a temporary stitch, and all you need to do is switch your machine to the longest stitch length possible. This time, do not backstitch at the beginning or the end, but leave long tails. Your parallel rows of basting stitches should be about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch apart. The goal here is to scrunch up the top piece so that it fits the width of the bottom piece. To ruffle the top piece, separate the top threads from the bottom threads and start gently pulling on one set until it shrinks down to match the bottom piece. Once the two pieces are the same width, you can tie off the ends so that the gathers stay in place. Zhuzh out the gathers so that they are even, and then do the same thing to the other end of the ruffle piece. No need to tie off the top threads yet. Flip it over so that right sides are facing together, line up the edges, and then pin so you can sew along the gathers. 
I am sewing at a half an inch seam allowance. No need to worry if you are sewing over the basting stitches since we are just going to remove them. It is a good idea to get into the practice of finishing off your raw edges either on a serger or with a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. With right sides together, you can now gather and ungather the top ruffle so that it fits the top of the lining piece. Tie off the ends and even out the gathers and then pin to sew along the top, leaving a half inch on either side that you do not sew. To make sure that the white lining fabric is not visible from the outside, do an understitch. This just means folding both seam allowances to the lining side and then top stitching the lining right along the very edge to that seam. This should help keep the lining to the inside. Here is the only tricky part to this top, sewing the side seams. Line up the side piece and then flip it so that the right sides are facing each other. Then place the lining layer on top and pin together. This will only get difficult at the top or when you prick your finger on the pins like I did here. Be sure to match up the bust line seams, having the seam allowance going in different directions. And then shove the shoulder portion inside to not accidentally stitch it. This is why we left that half inch at the top. I'm marking it with a double pin so I know where to stop. Turn it right side out and then hopefully if all things went well, the shoulders did not get stuck. Hey, look at that, it's starting to look like a shirt. The two ends that we left open, we will just need to hand stitch close, but we will do that at the end. Moving on to the back. First, finish off both long ends I'm choosing to do it on the serger and then folding over once and sewing with my sewing machine. But you can also just fold it over twice and sew the whole thing on your sewing machine. I will be sewing 13 lines of elastic to the back piece, each one inch apart. This is so tedious. And yes, my chalk broke and I have no one to blame but myself. I can't even blame it on a dog eating it again because I stepped on it. Anyways, after spacing out each line, join the marks with broken fabric chalk to make a guideline for sewing. Here are the 13 pieces of elastic that I have cut to fit snugly across my back. And then I got distracted by some whimpering and the sound of tap dancing. What's the matter, Roscoe? Coming from my dog, Roscoe, wanting attention. What's the matter? And apparently he also wanted to show my messy sewing space. And unicorn pants. They're my sewing pants. <laughs> <laughs> he makes the funniest snorting pig noises. Okay, back to sewing. I've pinned the first piece of elastic at each end and another in the middle to help achieve even shirring. Zigzag stitch over each of the 13 rows of elastic. This took some time. Start off each row with a few back stitches and then using that middle pin, stretch the elastic until it fits the length of the fabric and sew using a zigzag stitch while it's stretched. A few back stitches at the end and one line is complete. 12 more to go. Same way, repeat this process for all 12 lines. It's a little tricky towards the middle because it just wants to keep curling up on itself. But keep going, you can do it. Looks like I'm trying to roll out a scroll. Anyways, unroll the scroll and pin with right sides together, the back to the front at the sides. That wasn't confusing. Leave at least a half an inch at the bottom since the back piece is hemmed but the front is not. Guys, before I drag my booty off the floor, I'm also going to pin the back strap pieces at the shoulder seams to sew up the sides and the shoulders all at once with a straight stitch. Now that the top is mostly put together, I tried it on and found out that the ruffle was very saggy. Well, 
we can't have that. So I turned it inside out and will sew a short length of elastic to the seam along the top with a zigzag stitch. I tried it on once again, and since that turned out well, I can safely hide the raw edges on my serger or with a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. While trying on the top, I marked the back with clips where I wanted the straps to fall. But before attaching the straps, we need to first hem them. Fold over each edge twice and sew with a straight stitch. I used a few pins and clips to get it started. Sew right along the edge so that it blends in with the existing hemline and also doesn't come unfolded. It's a little tricky at the base, so just do your best. Sew as close as you can to that folded edge. I did a few quick measurements on the back just to make sure that the straps would be even. And since this is a scrap fabric project, I need every inch possible. So I'm just folding it under once and sewing with a zigzag stitch along the top. This still effectively hides all the raw edges. We are so close to being finished. Fold over the bottom of the front hem twice so that it meets seamlessly with the back hem. Just use that back line of stitching as a starting point to continuously hem the front. The last step is just to finish up the hand stitching required for those two little holes that we left on either side near the straps. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications to see all future tutorials from this YouTube Tot Sewer. Most other YouTube tutorials you'll see for our similar milkmaid top reveals are flowy, romantic, and running through meadows. Please enjoy my beer drinking reveal at the cutest German restaurant with legit German food. Check out my description box for the link. Auf Wiedersehen!